Welcome back gamers to another episode of the E Federation. Today we're diving right back into Land of Warfare for you Total War fanatics to watch another slugfest between Army vs. Army. Today we are we have a 3v3. It's gonna be me playing Seleucid, uh, Blackfoot playing Rome, and Battle Pants playing uh, Averni, the French. Um, Reversing Massilia, Iceni, and Kush. Kush is Ethiopia, um, Iceni is Britain, and Massilia was a little area just west of Rome on the coast of the Mediterranean. Right up by, it's right to the left of the top, uh, top of the boot. If you look at Italy as a boot, it's to the left side of the boot, like where the lips of the boots are. All right. Right now we're just doing our basic fight of getting the towers up to the uh, thing. I'm okay with him hitting my uh, hillman because why not? So these guys held Bertigala in a weird way. You'll see as we go in. Um, I thought it was it was something different. So that's why I thought I'd do a video about it. These guys had a different tactic. And, well, I want to show it off. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. My dog is barking at people mowing the lawn. Sorry about that. Dog has anxiety issues, so I didn't call him um, never just let, if you have men here, never just let Hillmen burn towers, especially with that kelp being there. That kelp could clean that up. Oh, is this a Sociae study? Yeah, Sociae study. My bad, guys, sorry. Just needed to get a screenshot for Mr. Thunder, so when he does the thumbnails, we can get the video out as fast as possible. Oh no, you broke that ladder. Veteran Legionnaires with Legionary Cohort. Yeah. Um, Arverni brought a Chosen Sword Spam. Towers are being burnt. Artillery's taken out. Yeah, they're holding back here. Um, they're doing choke point holds, which, all honesty, is not a bad thing to do. But what you're going to notice is there's actually only like one or two guys fighting for the front. Everyone else is hiding in the back. Um, I think it's Kush is the one that tries to hold the front. Which, all power to you, Kush. Um, sometimes you're going to have the allies that don't want to... Uh, that don't want to defend or push them up the front line. And sometimes you just got to say fuck it and put it up there. Worst comes the worst, they're just men. Like, like they're just hillmen, so kill them. Um, front line's usually a weak line anyway, so I would have had my weak line up here. Massilia is holding up here. Uh, Kush eventually will be holding here. Iceni holds here and in the back. I normally do not play Seleucid. Um, I used to play them all the time, but they're not really one of my favorite factions on large funds because, let's be honest, uh, Seleucid is too expensive. Like, their good units are like 1300 gold. Uh, what I like to do is I'll bring 10 Thorax, 4 Syrian Archers, 
a Hellenic Cataphrag General and then the rest just being Hillman, I think you can have at least that's five Hillman, ten Thorax. You just can't bring an artillery. If you do bring an artillery, make sure you take away a thorax instead of anything else. You need the hillman for the start. So Saluk is really good if you build a decent army. The hillman or eastern spearmen are really good for the beginning. I recommend just bring the hillman because they have the javis and you can get some kills. Like slaves can't beat him. Like the Kushite slaves, it's a decent fight don't get me wrong it's not like it's a horrible fight like the like one-sided it's gonna be a close fight but the hillman will win that fight also depending on who uh who's microwing we just got one more shot and then we're inside this is a different tactic we like to try where we've actually started doing it recently um because if you attack from the front, you control the whole gate. You hit here, you move in here, you create a whole area here where the archers can't really side angle you unless they have them like right here or right here on the side shooting in. Or from right here shooting behind the line or whatever. Push out archers. Oh, this is a battle I want to show off the Syrian archers on how actually good they are. Because I think I get like 240 in all my archers. Like, archers can be the change of the fight. We've got Celts, Celts, Celts. Another fun build to do in Massilia is if you, uh... Just spam Celts and Chevron them. Massilia is the best one to do that with. If you do want to do a Celt spam, a lot of people will do like Arverni or anything, which that's fine to go Arverni because you can bring the four Gallics. I prefer just to go the three Gallics from our uh, Massilia and then I go nothing but Celt spam, and it's it's pretty deadly. Right now, I'm just trying to pull off Javis, especially off of that Chotel. I think I get very aggressive with my archers. I think I throw them in pretty quickly. I just needed the blocks up. This is a good hit right here. Um, especially with them being farther up on the ground, on the plateau, it's easier for the artillery to hit. Um, because it's elevated, you're going to get front shots on it. You don't, you're not going to hit any buildings. Um, eventually, what I'd recommend is hit this target. If you ever see stuff like this blobbed up, like three units on top of each other right here, take it. Because one, if you... Even if they're like this, you're killing archers or slingers, so that's less rock. So. I know. Oh, he just got targeted. Awesome. Artillery's coming in. Oh! Yeah, that was a nice rip. And you're just going to give me the gate, so we've already got the gate captured. We can just run right through the gate. I just never seen this get held the way it is right now. Yep, archers are going inside settlement now. So, Kush, 
wasn't really. I think Kush is a real newer player because if you watch his archer play, you're gonna realize it's not that well. It's not that good. Because his hillman have forty four on a hillman. See, hillman will kill. Levy spear Freeman. They'll kill. They can go. They'll get killed by Celts, but they definitely can get a few kills on Celts. Right now I'm just jabbing down the swordsman with my helm. Just trying to get a few kills with him. And take the jabbies from uh, the swordsman from Kush. Which, with a Kush build, what I recommend with everybody is bring like four armored, four or five armored chotels and just bring the slaves. The Kush slave infantry, not regular slave infantry because they don't got jabbies. You want to bring regular cliche slaves so that way you can just massacre you can massacre uh, I think I had my guys on auto fire yeah I did um, you can easily massacre freaking uh, any infantry with jabbies And right now, the Celts are literally jabbing to the back of this armored show, not armored Chotel, but regular Chotel Warrior. Chotel Warriors are great and all. I don't recommend them. Um, they're just not armored enough. Like, and you have to cycle charge them. Their melee defense is insane. Their armor is insane. But if you aren't cycling them, they're going to be cut down like Thorax. Let's drop this. And as you can see, the swordsmen are very light armored. They, they're a waste of ammo. They're a waste of money, my bad, not ammo. And now we aim for the Chotel. These are the things you need to target on Kush. If you see regular Chotel, you kill them as fast as possible. Because they're a 700 and... Sixty dollar unit, um, as you, as is like they're more than a Syrian. So a Syrian killing them, you're making money. You're getting your money back from your Syrians. Yeah, that's a dead show tell, and it didn't even see combat. Okay, stop shooting. Now move them there so they can get side shots over here so we can break through that pretty quickly. Rome is focusing. Blackfoot's going to focus over here a little bit. I think he's going to end up pushing this hole right here. But this whole fight was literally just a walkthrough. Like, we weren't really being held at all. Already have 153 am arch uh, kills with that one archer, and I know I'm at like half ammo at this point on that archer. The rest are pretty much at three quarters. Oh, okay. So battle always gets confused. He always says that this is a hole. This was not a hole. This was not a gap whatsoever. As you can see, there's Massilian Celts holding them off right here. That's a Massilian Celt. You just pulled a unit through that unit. Um, moving my archers up to try to combat their archers. And also, a big issue with the enemy on this map is they were more focused on keeping their archers alive towards the end that they literally allowed me to just walk all over them. Just waiting for that one archer to get up in the pocket, Rick, right here. Because that will give me... Moving my archers up. And that 
one Cushite Archer is now dead and only had 57 kills on it. And that is a Cushite Archer. That means he's 150. They're, they have a thing called, I think it's Stock. Yeah, they have Stock. Alright, what Stock does, it allows them to hide in the middle of the field, like in the high grass. They're a really good unit to have. I, I personally love the regular Cushite Archers. They're... I always go with them over the royal, uh, the royals. Um, especially on large funds, what you do is you bring one royal archer as your general and bring three regular Kushites. And then you can bring like five or six armorates with the Kushite slaves. It won't be a full army. You only have like eight Kushite slaves. But it's, it's one of the best Kush builds. And as is Rome's just using his study on that line. He's getting his archers into settlement to take out this Cushade archer right here, if I remember right. Which, he's not even facing the right way, and he's not keeping him ready to shoot at the enemy. Honestly, there's really nothing. I, that would have been a good shot. Back shots on Hastati, if he was paying attention. Rome's archers are now inside settlement. That Cushay archer is not long for this world. Uh, we have a lot of chosen sword band from Iceni over here. So Iceni brought a infantry-based army instead of what Iceni's good with, and that's calf, not calf, but chariots. He didn't bring any of the chariots from. Advance at speed. Yeah. Okay, so what we did right there is that Kel was in combat for a while against that Chotel. So what I did is I grabbed my depleted hillman to cycle him out so I could just hold the Chotel back. So that way he could pull it out and cycle back into the Chotel and kill it on the charge. Which, as you see, he's doing right now. We got chosen sword swordsmen fighting Kelch right there. He doesn't have to worry about me uh, worry about archers hitting his flank because my archers are literally right here guarding him. I think this is about the time where I take my men off the tower and I run them into the bre breach right here, so that way I can fully focus on second tier now. But if you notice how we play. We always have our reinforcements literally right there. We took the gate, so all Rome has to do is run through the gate and be ready for a fight. Chosens are going in now. Uh, the rest of the thorax getting ready to go in. I have to. So when you pull your guys off the towers, you have to wait till every single one of them's off before you can go inside settlement. So if you're always watching our videos and was confused why you see me put my men literally outside of the breach when they're running off their towers, is because I cannot physically put them inside until every man is off the tower. I think I tell, this is the part where I tell uh, Battle to pull everything to the right and go on the right hand side to put some more pressure because Rome's putting so much pressure on the left it's not even funny. And with doing the breach like this you can easily funnel men in here and control the left side and you're not getting off towers. Especially if you can rush the gate like uh, we did at the beginning where we took, we took out the towers and then we took the gate. See how Rome's just coming in with no issue? Taking the secondary archer position is right here because it opens up this whole area for archer fight. So, 
Kush brought, I believe, three or four armored Chotels. I think he has four. Which isn't bad. It's a really good thing to bring the armors. They are literally... They're up there with, uh... They're up there with the nobles from Aravagi and the Galatian Royal Guard. When it comes to strength. Like, usability and versatility. So, you want to be focusing down as many armors as you see. If you can kill an armored with archers, do so. Yeah, he's got four. But yeah, we're just walking through their defense. They didn't really set up a really good enough defense. Like, holding here and here, you should have had archers here as you were holding here to kill off our infantry. But I did not give them a chance since I brought my archers in. So, this right here is very nice to do. I usually do this sometimes with the rails. If I have them, I'll put them up here. And I'll put archers up on the high end. Because these guys can throw javies to about here. And javies are a lot more dangerous than arrows. I don't know if any of you guys know that. He's got a hippie general. So I was when I saw his hippie as general, I was thinking to myself, man, I need to set up a uh, secondary line. So I keep one here, and I also move up. I have these two sitting back, ready to throw jabbies. Because this guy, if that calf comes up, he's going to pull through this unit. But I'll pop him in his shield wall and jabby the horses down. Um, just because you don't have ammo in your archers doesn't mean you're out of ammo. The javies from your infantry, each infantry, most infantry only carry one or two javies. But that's still javies to kill a bike. Or do a lot of damage. As is over here, Rome is holding. We have two dead Cushay archers. We just have the royal and then one more Cushite archer. I don't know where the other Cushite archer is. I think he eventually moves up. Or he'll be like right here and then we have to kill him with our archers. But the Britonic Slingers and the Gallic Hunters are all right here. Gall countries have hide in stock, which means they can literally hide in the open. They don't need walls or anything to block it. If you're not within range of them, they're literally hiding. There's the Kushite archer. That probably was one of the ones that got hit by the artillery. That's why it's down to 94 kills. 94 men. Now, if... Oh, he is. Okay, our Bernie's going to move up his archers here to take out the Cushite archer. And then the only archers we need to deal with is that general and three Gallics. So that's four archers. And we have four, eight, and eleven archers. Uh, honestly, Iceni, if he was... If you're going to play Iceni, bring the chariots. You, you'll get a lot better kills by doing it that way. Oh yeah, he asked for this area for his archers, so I moved my guys. Um, but this guy just got out of position. He's about to fix it. Yeah. We have more sword band sitting here. How many kills does this already have? 151. What about over here? 76. I think our Verney was shooting here, and that's why at the beginning you kept seeing a bunch of rocks hit here. Um, I think he forgot all about it. I'm not sure though. Uh, hopefully, Battle Pants will leave a message in the comments below explaining what happened to his artillery. Oh, he moved it over to the Romans' artillery. Should be a Roman militia, but... I think it's because he moved his men, so it changed it to a kill.
We're kind of just focusing on Kush right now because he's the biggest threat against us because Rome's heavily armored and the AP from Kush. So if you don't know, Kush's ability, their swords, are meant to chop through shields and kill the guy behind it because they're curved. Uh, they're like a question mark. They look like a question mark, but they swing with the question mark facing forward. So what happens is the curve of the blade will cut through the shield with the point of the blade that's curved going inwards or downwards will hit the guy in the head or shoulder that's holding the shield um, and kill them. So, and it was actually a very dangerous sword. As you can see, this is what they look like. Uh, I forgot the name of it. I think it starts with a K. I think it's like Quimber or Equipment. I don't I could be completely 100% wrong on that. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it's, it's a certain blade that Ethiopia had, and actually a lot of um, African tribes during the time actually could use that sword because it was meant to design to cut straight through Roman shields. I will, I'll look it up and I'll leave the name of the weapon. I'll put it in the descriptions. There's the artillery. Right here is a good shot. I should have been taking this. Is that still a sword side shot even if it's angled in front of them a little bit? Because on their front side, as you can see... Yeah, the shield's on the right hand side, so you're literally shooting right here. Which is sword side shot. Always pay attention to what angle you're shooting at on an infantry unit. Like, Rome's, our angle right here was shooting shield side shot, but it was up here, so it was hitting the back side of the shield side. So that's why he was able to get a lot of kills over there. And we have a Chosen Sword Band charging a Hasadi in Testudo, attacking Testudo. That's not a good thing to be in when you get charged. Uh, Testudos are meant just to block arrows and not charge infantry or get attacked while in prolonged melee. Um, so you predominantly want to do is try when you're on defense you want to put yourself in a predicament that you get the archer angles and the enemy doesn't so holding here isn't the smartest idea because this line right here my archers could have killed it and nuked it i think eventually i just start nuking it but i was letting arverni just have a little bit more fun i battle handle it oh yeah this is where they they screwed up And flood the gap. You have to flood the gap. I had this guy purposely run up. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I had that guy run up just to hold and try to get some cheeky kills on that thorax as he was running away. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Eventually what you want to do is take this spot. You can have your archers all in here and they shoot up and get side shots on this whole line. <coughs> Rome is now fully inside settlement. Um, the only thing outside is Arverni's artillery. 
Which, honestly, at this point, I think he's out. Oh, he had 135. Never mind. He did have ammo left. He went from 76 to 135. That's not bad battle. Good job. Watch the bloodshed! Watch him die. Alright, so that's technically an angle shot, the way he's sitting. And he's just wrecking that Thoreus. I think. No, he's a... If he were to move his archers here, and then shoot, he'd have a better angle. I like how my 35 Thorax sword isn't breaking, but the 42 Chosen Swordsman is. Yeah, they're the French. They're used to running away. I'm saving my archers for the end to take out the rest of their archers right now. So I'm saving what I have left of ammo. Um, Rome, I told him to use as much ammo as he wanted to, not to worry about it during the fight. But predominantly that's how me and Bat, uh, Blackfoot play, is he'll do the archer game at the beginning, where I'll do the archer game at the end. Or I'll focus down on the archers where he, he does what he needs to do. But right now, he's kind of helping me out right now, killing off the Britannic Slingers. Which I think he's out of ammo. That guy is. That guy is, too. Is he out of ammo now? Yep, they're out of ammo, too. Wait, are they? Okay, I thought I saw some guys holding their bow. Yeah, so Rome's out of ammo now. Um, and now what he's going to do is what we usually do is we'll put our archers like in a strategic location. I say that with quotes because um, there's nothing you can do with it. So you put them in a strategic location like you would like try to make it look like you're trying to get angle shots that they have ammo in them and you just put them in melee. So, oh, yeah, the Roman arch. Chris General's getting hit. Um, so they think that there's still some ammo in them, so they're going to waste ammo on it. Usually the best thing to do is save literally just a sliver of ammo in your archers. Like half of the last volley. And then you just move them up and don't shoot with them and have the enemy shoot them. And act like, oh no, I was being stupid with them. Sometimes the best tactic is a bluff in this game. Kush is an S tier faction. I see any, in my opinion, I'd put them as a high A tier faction, like just a little below S tier. Massilia, they're a B faction. Seleucid is an A faction. Um, Arverni is an S faction, with Rome being an S faction. The reason why I put Seleucid at A is because they're too damn expensive. And that's the only reason why I'd rank them at an A, instead of giving them the S. Because Seleucid is one of the best factions in the game. I love them. It's just that if you look at their units, you're just going to be spending like 1200 a gold on literally just one unit. And on large funds, you only get, uh, I think it's like 1200 on attack or 1300 on attack. Um, on defense, so the way this game is to newer players who don't know this game, um, the funds on defense, you lose 20% of your funds. Like, say, if everyone gets 1,300, but if you're defending, you lose roughly, you're, you're down to, like, 1,100, 400 gold. 11,400. 
where the attacker gets 13,000 because it's easy, it's harder, a lot harder to attack in this game, guys. Um, defense is pretty easy, all you have to do is play chokes. So that's why they give the attackers a fund increase because they have to throw away infantry at burning towers and stuff and pulling javies so they can bring the hillmen that they need with their real army, which is a thorax. On Ultra, I do recommend Seleucid. On Ultra, Seleucid would be an S tier faction. But on large, I, I would decrease them down to an A. Same with Macadon. Macadon is one of the hardest factions to play on the main thing of their their roster isn't that uh how would I put it? Their roster's not hmm, sorry, uh their roster's not and to me it doesn't look complete, is the words I would look say. It, it's they don't have a lot of oomph with their units. They got Royal Pelotists, which are great, don't get me wrong. Their pikes, holy hell, the Foot Companion pikes, I always recommend them. Um, I'll usually bring the Foot Companion General, um, just so I can pull, pull arrow and ammunition. This right here is a gap. This right here is a gap. Go, like, this, there you go, he fixed it. So, but at the very beginning when he pulled through here, there were still some Celts holding the line here, so yes, it would be technically a. It would technically be a um, pull through. Now, in the heat of the moment or anything, oh, his general's being shot. Is his general dead? Nope, his general's alive. The guy in gold is the general for when it comes to the Legatus general. You need to run them out of there, dude. You're losing. No, oh, he's got them out of there. So, they get his generals and the general's bodyguard from, like, uh, Carthage and Rome are not good whatsoever. Um, you can kill them with literally two full Syrians that don't have ammo. Just in melee alone, they'll kill that fucking general. Um, they wouldn't stand a chance. Yeah, the Legatus in them would take the charge on the archers, but after a while, the archers would come back in that fight. Now, this guy is a whole different story. These are called Hellenic Cataphract, and they are literally the one of the best shot cab in the game. Honestly, I would label them as the best, but you also have the Royals from... Uh, the Royal Cataphract from Parthia, um, or the Royal Cataphract from Armenia. Those, those are pretty good units too. They're just fast tanks. They're literally medieval tanks. Because this guy has 90 armor, 120 health. The Royal Cataphracts, if I'm right, I think have like 100 armor or 105 armor, which that's where they lose it. But in my when it comes to charge bonus, I think these guys have the uh, Royal Cataphract by 6 on charge bonus. I think they only have a 70. Again, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. Again, I don't have all the stats sitting up in front of me. Hippies? These guys, they're decent. Um, but they're literally like the first tier of the Hellenic Cataphract general. They're like the baby version of these guys. Which, they're not bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're bad. I like hippies. Hippies here are great. But I would have brought the Massilia General Cavgen, the regular one, the 500. Granted, they're not good. You're not going to kill with it at all because they'll get massacred. But that leaves you an open 600 gold to have spent somewhere else, like on Thorax. You could have gotten rid of your Axe Warriors and brought more Thorax. As you can see, Rome is just moving right in. So I see that Brit, uh, I see he realized the trick, so he's not shooting the archers. I'm waiting for the Gallics to show themselves.
is now the full army is now unified again. Now we have all three three factions together. I was just drawing units back here just the whole keep this armored show tell there. Um, I know there's pikes. Weren't there, was there pikes? No, there wasn't pikes. Think of a different fight, my bad. Yeah, okay, so what I was told by Blackfoot was to focus on this side and hold this side and push. Uh, our Verne and Ryan was going to take the front, and I was okay with that at that point. So I needed to get these archer, I needed to focus on archer games, so I had these guys clear out, and there was going to be a huge archer fight eventually, I think, if I remember it. And this battle was fought three days ago, so... I can barely remember what happened 20 minutes ago then, three days ago. There they are. There they are. You're gonna see about to see why you bring the Syrian heavy archers with Seleucid. Because they're the only faction in this game that can bring four Syrian archers. And you want the Syrian archers. You don't wanna sit there and be like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go bring the Persian lights. I always see that. People bring the Persian lights with Seleucid. You're literally bringing a faction whose main weapon are their archers and you're not using them. Like that would be like having a pistol and like having an arsenal of guns and you're being attacked and you choose to fight your, the enemy with a spoon. It just doesn't make sense. Alright, so he did fix the gap over here, so technically he wasn't pulling through, but then he opened this up. Do not... that You can't thin the line out that far. Do not give up an opening like that. Because you just allowed a whole unit coming through. And now we're fighting for a front line. My archers are now going to be fighting the uh, Kushite general and the... Uh, Gollics. That Gollic's dead. Now I'm going to shift fire to another one. Because right now he's just trying to dump into the infantry. Trying to... Trying to get these guys out of... Oh, I didn't even see that dude. That's that's right. I had my guys actually in melee with these dudes. Because he's pulling... He's trying to... He's being cheeky. And I understand what he's doing. And honestly... I, I, can, I can see it. He was being a little cheeky, but I'd let it. I didn't seem it as like a big issue to worry about. This is technically a pull through what he did, but I mean, I'd be tempted too. So <laughs> archers being that close to that unit, I would be very tempted. He's out of ammo now, 240. I think I move them up and then finish everything off. Or finish off what I can. Granted, these archers wouldn't have changed the tide of this battle. But I just wanted the kills. Like, having these archers and slingers, even when they had full ammo at this way, at this angle, it wouldn't have been a deal, a, a change. Because we have so much left already. Oh yeah, this armored Chotel came out. I knew he sent a second one over here and opened up his whole flank. Gallics again are great, but you gotta use them smartly. That's smarter. Like he would have had a better chance if he had him up here because then he could use his stock and hide, shoot one volley, then stop and have him hide, so they couldn't be targeted. But
Oh yeah, we just broke through and I'm just focusing down the Britain Slingers. Just getting the kills, adding up. Honestly, I should have been shooting his general, or Kush's general. Oh, I did shoot. Alright, so hippies are great, but they are weak on armor. If you get stopped and get start getting hit by archers. Oh yeah, see he's trying to pull through. So this is a pull through, okay? None of these units, these Roman units, are on their ground, are knocked down. He's literally just pulling through this unit. But it's going to get him killed because we kind of expected it. Oh yeah, that's right. I totally forgot, like I was... Like, as he said something, I realized that I didn't actually recognize the hippie uh, doing that until I was told to attack him with my general. I think I have ammo, right? Okay. Not a lot, but I do have ammo left. There is a slinger on the beach. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward if they don't break at the end. I don't know if this was a fight where uh, they totally forgot a unit. Because a general's still alive with 10 men left. There he is. He's dead. <laughs> I've been having really good games lately. Like, the players in this game are getting a lot better. Are learning new tactics. Honestly, is just amazing to see the community actually growing and getting better. Um, Alright, yeah. So I'm going to fast forward it. The battle will be over here soon. We won. The only thing that was there was uh, Massilian Thoreau Spears and Rome kills it. Oh, fights in and it breaks in the end of the game. The end of the game. There you go. So let's look at the any, the uh, unit losses and uh, kills and look at um, army comps. So with Salukid, I had 1850. 1898 kills, only 1,592 losses. I wasn't really needed. Uh, my archers were where I got my kills. Some thorax did well. We'll go down to Blackfoot with 2363 kills. His Syrians, three Syrians did great. Um, five Hestadi did decent. Uh, his Solsia Hestadi did well too. Wow, 128 kills on it. Um, his veterans did what veterans do. His um, his Cohort did what cohort do, cut through everything. Um, we have our Bernie with 2246 kills and 1755 losses. He lost pretty much all his infantry. Uh, they did good. His chosen did phenomenal. They paid for themselves. Let's go down to the Iceni army bill with Darth Vader 2000. Uh, six chosen sword band. He still had a full chosen sword band. Where was it? Huh. Um, my bad. Uh, the Britonic Slingers, you could, what I would have done with the two ambushers that you had, and I forgot to show that, the ambushers were over by the, the coast in that little tr cluster of trees towards the back side of us, right side of the gate if he was coming out of the settlement. Um, we killed that off pretty quickly, yeah, we had a, a veteran legionnaire and my general kill him. Um. I apologize, I didn't catch that in the replay. Um, but twenty, uh, he had 2,500 losses. Uh, your KD wasn't the greatest, but you did kind of strike me off as a newer player. And then we got Frogger again with Massilia when the 
previous video who was playing as Rome um, had 1215 kills and 2486 losses as Massilia your army comp I'm sorry guys his army comp was three uh, four Massilian Thorough Spears four Thorax Swordsmen two Axe Warriors five Celtic Warriors three Gallic Hunters one Celtic Slinger and a Hippie General Hippius Lancer I would have brought I would have gotten rid of the Axe Warriors and maybe one of my one of the Massilian Thorough Spears and just brought Thorax Swordsmen think you would have had a little better kills. You did good with the Celts. The Celts are no, like, you gotta cycle them, though. You were not cycling, but for what you did, they did their, they did their work. And then we have Kush with 1657 kills, the top kills on his team. He brought four armored legionnaires, one Kushite slave infantry, three Shotels, and one swordsman with his archers. His archers, he did not play at all well. You, you need to pay attention to your archers, um, McCabe. Um, you did good. What I would have again, what I would have done is got rid of the swordsmen and got rid of your showtels, your regular showtels, not the armors. You did good there. Um, and bring more Kushite slave inventory and one more armored. I know you can bring about five or six armors if you move your funds around appropriately and spend appropriately. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys liked it. Hit the, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you next time in the Land of Warfare.